Alright, hi everyone, Carol from Segovia Quilts here. Today I'm going to be showing you an alternative way to put some fabric on the back of a jersey so that you can include it in your t-shirt quilt. So here I have a jersey from a client's quilt that I'm working on. And if you've ever seen a jersey or played any sports or worked with jersey fabric, you know that it has all of these little holes in it and you can see right through those holes which when you're playing sports is great because it allows it to breathe and you don't get so hot. But when you put this in a quilt, these holes, if you put it like this, will allow the batting to poke through and it's just gonna be a nightmare. You're gonna have like a fuzzy block in your quilt and you don't want that. So I've done a video previously showing you how to include a jersey in your quilt by using heat and bond or heat in bond and they have a sew-in version and an iron-in version. The one that I did was an iron-in. Um, the downside to using that is it has a shiny surface to it that you can see through all of these little holes. Now after a couple of washings and dryings, you won't be able to see that anymore, but initially you will. So today I'm going to show you an alternative using spray and bond. Now this is a basting adhesive spray. This is normally used for um, embroidery, and it says right in here, embroidery, but it's great for sewing, quilting, pattern piecing, and crafts. So you can pretty much use it just about anywhere in your sewing room. So now this is temporary bond. Um, so this is not gonna be something where when you use it, it's permanent, you can't take it off. But what I also like about it is it will not gum up needles. So that means you can spray it and you can still sew it, which is perfect for embroidery. But today we're using it for quilting. So let me show you what I like to do. So I've got my work surface prepared here. Now I like to put down fabric around the area I'm going to be spraying because this does have some overspray and it will make stuff sticky. Even though it's not permanent, it will be sticky. I personally hate sticky, so these here are just scraps from the quilt that I'm working on. These are pieces of the shirts that the client does not want in the quilt, so I've got these laid out here. Now this jersey, it is white, so I'm going to go ahead and put a white backing fabric behind it. So I have my fabric here, and you can use just about anything, so generally I like to use the back of a t-shirt from the client quilt. Now, there's a lot of jerseys in this particular quilt and there are not enough t-shirts for me to use to put behind all of the jerseys. This is the last one I have to do. So I'm just using some white cotton fabric. I went ahead and ironed it to get out most of the wrinkles. But you can use the back of a shirt, you can use cotton fabric, you could even go so far as to use like if you have an old sheet lying around or a pillowcase, anything like that. Now I do like to try and get the backing fabric to match the color of the jersey. This way it kind of blends in, it's not so obvious. Um, unless you want it to be, then go right ahead. Like you could use a red fabric behind this and honestly that would probably look super cool because the red would really pop. And just out of curiosity, I've got a piece right here, so I'm just gonna lay it down, just so we can see. So look at that, that's a huge contrast. You could totally do that if you really wanted to. Obviously I'm not doing that because this is a client quilt and I don't want them to be surprised. <laughs> so what I do is I've got my backing fabric down, I've got my shirt or my jersey laid out on top of it. You wanna make sure it's facing the right direction. So obviously this is facing the right direction. So I'm just kind of smoothing everything out. And then what I like to do is I like to fold it halfway over onto itself. So now what I like to do is when I spray my basting spray, I don't do the whole thing and then lay the jersey out because it will get kind of wrinkly and then it's kind of sticky and trying to smooth it out honestly becomes kind of a pain. So I just fold it over half and I've got this half here exposed ready for me to put my basting spray on. So I'm gonna give it a little shake and then I'm just going to spray. And I know it's hard to see in the camera, but there's a little bit of like a fuzzy stuff that comes out. Now this is the adhesive spray. You don't need a lot. I've got just a nice little coverage here. And then I'm going to grab this part of the jersey and gently I'm going to scooch it back over and then start smoothing it 
as I go. Now the good thing is if you mess it up, you can peel it back up and then do it again because it's not permanent and you do have you know a little bit of time to work with it before it dries and becomes like where you can't work with it anymore. So I'm just trying to smooth out this part of the logo here. This is obviously an older jersey so it's been worn and used a good amount. And I'm just trying to smooth out this stuff here. Okay, so I'm happy with that and I'm just making sure to give it a good rub all over so there's good contact everywhere. All right, and then now I'm going to fold the other half over. Now I like to pull it until it starts giving me a little bit of resistance. So right there is my resistance. That is where my adhesive spray stopped. So I'm stopping there. Now I'm going to spray the other side. Get it there. And same thing, I'm going to gently pull this back over. And I do stretch it a little bit as I'm going to help kind of smooth it out before I actually start smoothing it out. And these, this little black section here is what's kind of being a little stubborn. But we'll get it. We'll get it where it needs to go. I'm just rubbing some of these little creases out. There you go. We'll get this top up here. I'm smoothing all the way out. Now I'm not concerned about this section up here or this section up here because this is my neckline here so I'm not going to go past that. So when I end up doing the measurements to cut out the actual block, it'll probably be, well it'll be somewhere in here that I'll end up doing a straight cut. So I don't worry if these are basted down. All right, so we've got that. So this is ready for me to go ahead and do my measurements so I can go ahead and cut out my block. So this will go on to the next section and you'll see here, and this is why I like to lay down stuff. So I'm peeling it up a little bit because I have been doing this already to a couple of jerseys and there has been overspray on here. So I can feel it, it's a little sticky. Again, it's not that big of a deal. It's super easy to clean up, just a little bit of water, and it's taken care of. So this is done. Now what I like to do after this is obviously cut out my blocks. Now here is one that I've already cut out. So I did the same method here. I've got my white backing fabric on here, and my jersey is adhesed to the top. I've already done my measurement, so obviously this block is already cut out. Now, what I like to do after that is, even though it is adhesed down temporarily, I still have to do the layout and then the sewing of everything together, and I don't want my two layers to come apart. So what I like to do is I will run a stitch around the whole block. Now this is about an eighth of an inch in, and I do this on all my edges. I just do a little stitch, and it just puts the backing and the jersey itself together permanently. This way I can work with it. I don't have to worry about them coming apart or coming undone or anything like that. So I recommend running a stitch along all of the edges and then it's just like a regular block, just another block that you're working with in your quilt and you don't have to worry about it. So I hope you found this tip of using the spray and bond adhesive spray to put jerseys into your t-shirt quilts.